boop, boop. We are, 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 are live. I'm here <laughs> with Guy Jose Linares. I hope I pronounced your name right. It's not my mother tongue. Um, and we are here. We are going to discuss uh, his life, his social type, and ask a few questions and see if we can get a better understanding of, uh, of his type. Guy, I want to welcome you because, as I was just saying to you, I think you are an excellent example of a four, <laughs> and I hope that we are going to be able to buck some negative stereotypes today um, yeah. and, and look at the positivity and maybe f figure out how you got there. I, I'd love to hear um, and all that stuff. So first, feel free to introduce yourself and tell us about uh, your life, your background, your story, your career, that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, um, my name's Guy, and in case people didn't know. Um, so, in terms of in terms of just me growing up, you know, I'm just you know, Hispanic kid growing up in Texas. Um, been living in Houston pretty much all my life. Um, yeah, all normal stuff, high school, all that good things, except you know, being gay, coming out of the closet was probably the one interesting thing, I guess. <laughs> and then. Um, yeah, studied, went to school. I have a degree in business management. I'm now a manager. One thing that's pretty cool, uh, people like to hear that I'm actually, um, I work for GameStop. Mm -hmm. Positive and negatives on that company, but um, it's been a great career. GameStop, <laughs> stonks go up. Room. Yeah, yeah. Goes up and down, just random stuff happens to it. But uh, yeah, and then been working for GameStop for t almost 12 years. Been working in retail for almost 20 um and yeah and then i got into ops about four or five years ago um and then just been part of the community ever since just trying to type and everything awesome 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 and um i wanted i wanted to kind of uh say like one of the things I, I i found interesting to you from the cursory information i knew about you was you were you were the best type you were the best it, community typist like, yeah typing <laughs> The king of typing, and then when anyone yeah. walked on your head, you went, "Oh no, no, don't!" Right? They were like, oh, the basement's the best guy. Yeah. And when I asked you about, it, I'm like, "Hey, how'd you get motivated to become the best typist?" You're like, "What? Do you, why did? You, why don't I just ask you? Hey, yeah, guy, what motivated you to become the best typer?" <laughs> Well, it wasn't to be the best, obviously. That wasn't, that's not the, and I still feel weird about it. Um, honestly, I just wanted to get to know the system better. Mm -hmm. And my husband was the one who got me into OPS. He's the one who got me all oh, into no. this. Yeah, yeah. He introduced me to OPS and everything. And um, he caught on pretty quickly. And I was struggling. I'm like, I don't understand the terms. I don't understand what's happening. What the hell? Um, and so I just kind of felt like buckling down and just being like, okay, I need to get this thing in my head. And I just figured, you know what, if I type the weekly celebrity every week, that's practice and just do it week after week, week after week. And so then that's how I just started learning the system, just trying to type every single week. And I figured this will be the fastest way for me to learn. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, he's actually my typing partner too. So we actually talk all the time. Um, so a lot of my results are also because of him. Cause we, you know, we meet up and we talk all the time about OPS. So, mm -hmm. um, that's really why I just started typing all the time. And the, and honestly, like it was really just because I could submit every week and my results were there and I didn't have to do my own like OI of like keeping things written down like anywhere. I didn't have to keep record. The record was there already. It was already set in place. And then, uh, you know, on and off, I was getting, you know, demotivated to type. So what I started doing uh, about two or three years ago, whenever I started typing, um, after like eight months, I was like, okay, I need to keep myself motivated uh, to keep typing. So I would like pump myself up. So every week when I would submit, I'm like, okay, cool. I was off two coins. I was off three coins. You know what? I saw this and this and this. Cool. I'm happy. And I would just keep, I would actually mention that in on Facebook that I'm like, oh, hey, I'm doing good here. You know what? That's a win. You know <laughs> what? I'm doing good here. That's a win. And I guess because I kept doing it, Austin um, at one point was just like, wow, guy, I guess you might be the best typer right now. <laughs> and I'm like, what? What are you talking about? What, what do you mean? Like, there's like, 
Oh. And, and I think it just started the trend of people noticing that I, I was getting, you know, better, better results. Um, and now even more so because, you know, it feels like, you know, there's there's tournaments and there's, mm. you know, the record is getting people are, are better. You can see that the record a lot better. So people are just getting more motivated and they're just seeing my name more and more. Um, but yeah, it was not my intention. It's still not my intention. Yeah, you, you tied with Nilda for the best, the king and queen of typing. Right? Yeah, yeah, for that tournament, which sucks, by the way. I didn't, I, at first, you know, and then going back to me and my social type, I was like, oh, this sounds like fun. fun it's going to get the, it's going to get the group together. This is going to be cool. And then I started doing the tournament and I just started getting nervous. Like, oh my God, you know, people were posting on Facebook that I'm going to win. And I'm like, oh no, now there's pressure uh crap so then i had to like really like buckle down and like watch you know i don't know how many hours a week just to try and get there you know and, and win and that sucked and i'm just like this was i regretted it <laughs> during the tournament because it just emotionally it was draining and it was hard and i hated it um you but it was still, it? yeah yeah but it was still no fun basins, i know right <laughs> i know right uh, i know so you it was just more like, oh, cool! I won. Thank God, it's over. <laughs> like, <laughs> I heard. So I literally was just talking to Nilda, and she said as you were doing it, you're like, I hope you. I, she said something like, you messaged her and said, I hope you win. And she yeah. Like, oh, fuck. Yeah, I did. Yeah, because um, you know, that's the other thing too. It's like the whole thing about being the best. It's my goal isn't to be number one. It's just to be good at typing that's my goal just be good at typing it's not to be number one um and so the tournament i was looking at more as cool this is a great way to get people who typically don't submit all the time people who typically don't you know try to type so consistently this will be a good way to get them up there and see how good the community really is good at typing if they put their best foot forward on it um because i don't feel like doing anything special aside from just consistently doing it every single week and submitting every single week and put it in the work every single week. I feel like anybody can do that if, if they stay committed. Mm -hmm. So that's really all, all it was. So I was wanting other people to do well. So to show that the community is great, uh, okay, wasn't to be number one. I find that so funny because people are like, you're competitive because you're this person is competitive because they are DI. It's like, yeah. And, and actually a little bit on, on the journey there on how, how I landed on four is, um, that was one of my struggles at first when social hierarchies came out and we were wondering and you know i was trying to figure out which you know what am i mm -hmm. i was like okay well i know i do have moments where i flex you know um there are moments when i will be like look at me look at me here's my consume story about me look what i'm doing you know or and and i do i used to um i might do eventually i i do gaming tournaments um so I do go out to the scenes and, and play Smash Brothers and tournaments and brackets, and I always want to do very well. And I get happily surprised when I do well or when I win a tournament. Mm -hmm. And um, however, it also felt like I do have friends. Like I don't want to like completely. I don't ignore people, you know. And and I do feel like wanting to have that sense of camaraderie. Uh, so I was struggling with that friends and flex at first, mm -hmm. and but just talking to the community uh talking to you know my husband and everything we just eventually were like well how much are you really flexing like how much like you, you mentioned it to me the other day about like you don't flex that you're the best type or you don't you know and um i think because of the friends with the flex thing coming out more and more people were i was seeing it more that they're like wow you're not because i really don't get you know that angry if i lose or, or whatever i'm like cool what that happened cool i just have to learn from it get better whatever you know i'm not like gary v where he's just like I'm, i was ready to fire the dude who beat me at rock paper scissors i'm, I'm about just like, to die i'm about to yeah. I lost. i'm about to die this is a great shame on my family and my name exactly i was just like damn that sucked and you know and i do get emotionally hurt about it and everything but i'll eventually move on i was like okay cool well it, was, it wasn't in the card was it meant to be um but yeah and and then with uh the four and the two side though uh because that left me, I'm pretty sure, friends over flex, you know, even the way I manage um, my store and everything, my, my key focus at, at running my, my store at GameStop is just to ensure that my staff is happy, because I just feel like if my staff is happy, they're going to perform very well, they're going to do their job. And so my my goal has, has always been as a manager is just to make sure that I have a great working environment for my team, which, and 
and it would also explain why like so many people get really competitive at, at, at my location at my store there's people around me that are very competitive and want to be the best at whatever goal they want us to hit and i'm just like i'm happy if i'm in the middle i'm happy if i you know what we're, we're having a good time friends are great you know my associates are happy that's what matters right like <laughs> i just don't get that motivated by, by things like that um but yeah specialized versus for uh, versus uh um responsibility was a little bit harder um and that's kind of I figured I was still a four though, because I, I do feel like when it comes to the responsibility coin that I do see where I don't always take ownership about everything around me, like my identity and everything who I am. Like, I'm not afraid to like no, lean on others more, like, leaning on other people more for areas that they they specialize in that I don't. Mm -hmm. um, again, I can just use work as an example. There's people who are stronger in key areas that I'm not strong in and I'm not, uh, I am sometimes afraid to reach out, but I still will reach out and be like, man, you're better at this than I am. Can you help me? You know, can you come over to my store and, and help me fix this X, Y, Z? And um, yeah, plus it's also like, and so when I, so I decided to reach out to Michael and um, a part of me was just like, I'm 99% sure I'm probably, I'm four. 99% <laughs> sure. Um, however, I do, I do feel like the community kind of likes that little, you know, stamp of approval. That, <laughs> uh, kind yeah, of that's how yeah. that's how I came to to Dave as well as, as I when I sent it I was like I don't need your approval for my type I didn't didn't even tell him what type I thought I was and then he's yeah. like hey man uh, could you yeah. give me a thread to to give you some advice and I was like okay I'm a crazy one and I, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah exactly so I was just like if you, if you come to them like just be like I see the good and bad in this and don't come with like <gasps> guys tell me please i can't figure it out because then then oh my god i'm gonna tell this person something they don't want to hear and then they're gonna bite my head off because they've experienced yeah it. so, it's just kind of our approach too i'm just like hey man I, I think i'm a four that's where i'm leaning however man like here, here are some places and areas where i could see these other numbers mm -hmm. um <clears throat> but yeah i had just reached out to michael and i was just like we need that sound of approval because that's kind of what the community it, was like the official type official like, yeah and, and I'm hearing Dave's audio, I was like, he's like, this is what we're seeing right now. I'm like, yeah, yeah. oh, wow. People don't, people keep taking the, tell me, tell me, tell me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah especially with, you know, and especially with social hierarchy, they've said it multiple times. We, we, we don't really want to, like, we're still, they're, they're, they're still learning the system. They're still learning, yeah. you and, know, and everything. During, during Habib's interview, I could kind of read Dave's NF where he's like, I'm not sure about my accuracy at this time. So I'm not. I'm not yeah. putting the most weight on it, but like when, exactly. when you kind of see something and you yeah. see something and everyone's kind of honing in, um, this is social. So like, yeah, maybe we actually get the community more. I've tried to get the community to help me type and no one's, no one's done it, but, um, maybe I'm just not the best at hurting. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, but then, um, so yeah, so I reached out to Michael, he, um, and he basically said, was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not a thousand percent sure on four too. He was just like, however, it's, you're just an ungodly amount of friends. Yes. <laughs> how can it not ungodly be? Ungodly amount of friends. He's just like, how can it not be? A, 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 how, how can you not be a four? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just like, you're so. You're so goddamn friendly, and I keep talking about yeah. working with the four, and it literally will be leaving. I'll take him out to lunch, and it will be leaving. A lady's getting in her car. Hi, Eugene. I'm like, how do you know this lady? Oh, she helps me when I have trouble getting up the elevator. I'm like, in that yeah. situation, I would have been like, oh yeah, thank thank you. Yeah. Then walked away. Yeah, um, I've done that too. Time like, to make a friend. Yeah, like, I, I run into so many people. It's funny, yeah, and actually, I, I run into so many people that you know that come to my the store or whatever, and it's just like, hey, how you been? Like, wow, you're still here? Yeah, I know. I haven't seen you in a year or whatever. <laughs> it's just crazy how it just, and it it does feel second second nature sometimes. Um, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, talking to Michael, it was just like it was just like, yeah, I'm pretty much seen for. He was like, I can see how you don't necessarily do the responsibility exactly he's like you're still responsible you still got things you got to do but he's like your your main motivation for what you do does seem to center around the camaraderie you know point so so uh, wanting to speak on that i feel like that is kind of the uh, secret superpowers of the ones and fours is that they have the specialized and the responsibility kind of in the middle it's kind of like double observing where it's yeah. like where it's like um 
if if I get the reason the 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 first one is just God King, and it's like if I get the reason that I can flex here, then I can do the other things. Or even 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 for me, the friends. If I if I get the flex, if I get the I get to be better. But it's it's for you. It's if I get the friendship and the community and the camaraderie, I will then do the responsibility. Yeah. And yeah. And so I'm like. I'm like, I, I almost have to wonder if, um, so like you are the positive archetype of in your little uh, yeah. manager role, you're like I yeah. community, keeping everything smooth. I'm like, I look at the four and I look at the positive four and I go, it's like the man of the people. The man right, of yeah. The people. <laughs> the, the people of the people, like um, right. of the people. Uh, you're, you're in it, you're, if you are a community leader, you're, you're on the ground with the people. Mm -hmm. being with them where it's like that's that's so much harder unless i'm like i'm so directional it's like if i'm going this direction if you're on the way with me then i'll then i will be with you but outside that it's it's very hard to just come down to the ground and yeah it, it makes it hard so I, I i have to wonder like um did you have anything so like the negative archetype of the four is the leaf on the wind right do you, do you do you feel like that? Like at one point in your, your your life, you were a leaf on the wind, and you had to go against something that made you go, "Okay, I need to grab more responsibility. Maybe go towards this management role so that I can create positivity among the friends." Did you have that? Um, I was trying to think of like a, a concrete example because I'm messy. Um, that where like that actually did happen in my life, and I can't necessarily picture it. Um. Just because, and maybe it was just luck, just growing up. Because my, I was just always, I, I just always had it in my head, of like, you grow up, you go to school, you go to college, mm -hmm. you graduate, you get a job, and you're supposed to move up in the company. I just, just figured that was what you had to do. Mm. Um, however, I would say, maybe I got lucky in the sense of like, I didn't think it through you know, properly of like, am I falling into a sort of trap of some way? Like if, if me going through this path, picking this job and just going along with what I had to do was just, was that me, you know, just being a lift in the wind, leaf in the wind where <laughs> I just didn't, I, I was like, Oh, this is just what I do. And I just kept doing it, you know? So, this, this, so do you feel like your family's like been supportive of you? Like through, through yeah. the whole thing? Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was yeah. 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 And that's what it was too. Cause my family had just, I, whatever type they are, you know, were always encouraging and like they wanted me to rise, you know, if, you know, hypothetically one of my parents was, was flex over friends, you know, they would want to, they always encouraged me to be like, no, you need to go, you know, further. You got to go make a lot of money. You have to go, you know, move up and, and do this. And, um, and maybe just right from that, I was just like, okay, I guess that's what I do. And, you know, <laughs> didn't think it through. See, that's, so. a, that's, a, that's a very interesting thing. Cause I'm mm -hmm. going to be honest, like about me and my family where it's like, um, I'm a mo I've been not always the best at school or like not always the most consistent and I'm an EP and don't show up. Mm -hmm. late. I've showed up late and stuff. And just this chip on my shoulder where I'm like, oh, you need to see I'm the best and you don't. And so I'm depressed. And so they're like, Oh, Hank's not responsible. Hank's yeah. uh, Hank's got a chip on his shoulder. Hank's depressed. Hank doesn't like us. <laughs> um, and then it was like, and now it's like I'm, that I'm grabbing responsibility now because I realized, that, oh, oh, like I need to do this to get the the real flex rather than just talking about myself. Um, they started to appreciate, but there were times where like, oh, you're not a responsible person, are you? Just because of <laughs> so much chip on shoulder that I was like, because I'm not the best at this, I'm not even gonna try. Like right. Gray mentioned that it was like I'm the best at everything. And mm -hmm. so it's like this social order stuff, like people, people were saying to me like, Oh, I don't feel like you, you're just up in my face. So you're not a one. And I'm like, <laughs> you don't, this is way more macro than that. This is yeah. way more macro, big picture umbrella of your life where you, where you're going to get drawn to and depressed. And um, one thing I'm super interested in is like, so it does sound like what you're saying totally mm -hmm. lines up with what they were saying about the fours is if, if the winds are right, Thing, yeah, you, you things will turn out well, and so like when I'm looking at structures of society, I'm like, how do we make structures for the people who need the structures, um, which would hypothetically be um, the threes and fours. They need mm -hmm. more. 
construction, I see a lack of structures at times for the threes and fours that they don't have that in their life. Um, so like, yeah, muting my phone. Um, but yeah, but yeah, that's, that's super interesting. And, and the other thing you go against is that pe people are like, oh, well, they're a manager, so they can't be, they can't be a responsibility. They can't be yeah. responsibility. I'm like, no, there are slots for managers for threes. There are slots for managers for <laughs> fours. There are slots that all over, all over. Um, and you got to look at how they're going about it. Like yeah. the devil is in the details. Yeah. And actually that was something I was thinking about uh, recently where um, I do remember when I first became a manager and having that struggle of like being tough on my staff, you know, providing, oh. providing, you know, negative feedback and, you know, writing people up. That was incredibly difficult for me to do. And I actually have had like, uh, my job before GameStop, the district manager wasn't a fan of my managing style. Like he just felt like I needed to be tougher, you know, and, and, and on people and everything. And I just wasn't that kind of person. Mm -hmm. So like, and to a degree, it's still hard for me now to, to be incredibly tough. And, um, but yeah, it was just more about me having to find, find the way for me to balance it, you know, balance the way to stay motivated, motivate my staff, get things done, but still be me, you know, and, and not be, be, be incredibly, you know, uh, uh, mean and crazy to my staff. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like you could, sometimes you could end up swinging one way or the other if you're not used to it. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, just my management style was just like, it's no different from a lot of the people around me Just seeing how, how more driven seeming they see they were. <laughs> uh, so, so, yeah. so the, the anecdote, the, the, the pattern would be, force would not be in management but they can be yeah, so yeah. When, when people draw on this like oh this is the trend therefore you are this they're, they're drawing right. on the intuition and that's not you're not looking at what's that actually happening you have yeah. to zoom in a bit more so yeah you gotta zoom in more and look 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 at the like you mentioned earlier the overall pattern the macro of like cool, well, you're a manager but what exactly has been driving you to do it you know why are you in this position how have you stayed in this position why are why you know why is x y and z happening you know if you you're not exactly like these other the other managers around you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay okay i think i think it's time to move into the questions okay awesome yeah yeah because <laughs> we're almost we're almost at a uh half hour so okay i, I thought we we're gonna do like six hours today what? i'm kidding i thought we we're gonna do like six hours today it's fine we can do six hours we can go as long as it takes and we can talk and i feel bad because I, I remember some uh the interview i think goes too far <laughs> people are like why are we here still why is it still happening <laughs> um yeah i wonder i wonder what the right length is but some people really yeah. just like listening to this stuff as a podcast um oh that's true yeah um and i feel like there's um I like moving into the questions because like you can already tell like I'm like, hey, let me talk about myself. And I'm like, no, we'll get through everything, tire them out, and then I can talk about myself. Right. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I'm just kidding. But like but the, but more and more, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe I just admitted that. Um, first question, guy. Mm -hmm. If you could be, what would you want to be famous for? Yeah, so uh I was thinking of I, I actually looked at the I, I had the questions like a you know weeks ago. I uh, looked at them quickly, and then last night I sort of really you know hampering in, um, which is interesting because I think this might relate more with my just my type being you know in the SFP mm -hmm. uh, and, and FI and everything. Like I feel like um, it's usually whatever I currently value like in the moment because um, I want to be famous because like. I, I'm, I still love like anime as an example. I love anime, watch TV shows, whatever, mangas and everything. And, you know, I used to do, I, I used to be very heavy in like comic cons and, you know, conventions going there, dressing up, cosplaying, all, all that, all that stuff. And, you know, maybe 20 years ago, that question, I would have answered it more relating to that uh, because that was, I was more into. And now, you know, older and everything, so you know, then? back then, um, I probably would have been like just known for being like a good cosplayer uh, or you know what I mean? Just somebody that is dressing up like the characters going there and being known, people taking photos with you, whatever. I find that, <clears> and, I find that interesting. I find that interesting because I was mm -hmm. like, Oh, he's saying anime and stuff. Maybe did you want to make the best anime ever? And you're like, yeah. 
No, I want to I want to be in the, the the cosplayer in the community as community. Yeah, like, exactly, right? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And so and but nowadays because I'm I'm more uh, into OPS and I mean I still do gaming. Gaming's probably the the best thing mm-hmm. that I still do. Um I would just say now, you know, just being more about like um how helpful I am with the communities that I'm in in general, you know, like whether like I'm known at GameStop as, you know, a person that cares for his staff is, has been really good. And, you know, having people there who do remind me and tell me that like, man, I like working for you. I like being here, you know, I like shopping here um, or here in the community is great where it's just like, Hey, you know, just getting the positive feedback has just, I guess just anything positive for my life. Is just, positive. Being remembered for something positive is probably the best answer. I would, I would say. Being remembered for something positive. <laughs> yeah. The hey guy. That's not, yeah. very, not a very good All right, all right. Like, God, he sucked, man. Like, no, no, he no, no, no. Actually, off. Wish, I wish he showed off. Better off. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, mm-hmm. been, I've been dealing with the depression of my worldview. My goals are too complex and big, and I had to go. Yeah. How do I how do I make about something simpler and more positive? And um, right, yeah, because my my life was depression. I was like, ha, I'm bragging about my goals, and it's like, <laughs> you ever even gonna get an inch closer to eight of those? Any of those? Right, exactly. I was like, okay, wait, what is this all really about? It's about it has to be a, you have to make this about one thing, right? I I, I, eight things, and they're all pulling you different directions. But no, that's super cool. That's super cool. Um, being positive in the community. Okay. Next, next question. Next question. Guy, guy, guy. guy. <laughs> what would constitute the perfect day for you? Uh, so again, you know, we, we, I read the questions prior. Um, <clears throat> what did I write? I forgot. Um, no, no, reading. no conscious. I know, right? Just, just I know, right? Oh, just well, I know what it was. It, it, it was really more, um, the I, I love a day where it just feels stress free uh, because in my current job, you know, I'm a manager. So like um, basically my life is kind of glued to my phone. I have to have it with me all the time in case I have a phone call, in case something happens, my store blows up, whatever. And um, whenever there's like things happening over there, you know, I get really stressed out even if it's my off day. So Honestly, it's pretty simple for me. If I know it's a day where nothing's going wrong, let's say my store is closed for the day, <laughs> nothing's going to happen. Um, <clears throat> that's probably the beginning of it. Like that's going to be stress free mm-hmm. for sure. And then the other aspect would just be anything where like the day is filled because I'm still OE, sleep last. Yeah. You I know, know. You I like sleep. waking up at a decent time. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> And having the rest of the day to do whatever it is that I want to do, but not keep it boring. <laughs> I don't, like I don't, I don't like it when it's just thin air and there's or nothing to do for the day just because I'm off. I'm like, no, I want things to do. I want things to be progressing, <clears throat> and just having a very stress-free environment. <laughs> so anything that constitutes a stress-free day, um, and but yet it's still filled with excitement and things to do, new adventurous things. It's probably my perfect day. <laughs> No, that's super cool. That's super cool. Okay. Next question. For what in life do you feel most grateful? Um, it was the two things. We mentioned it earlier, which is my upbringing with my family. Like, I, I do, I, you know, we hear the stories of Dave of, like, him having some negatives and positives from his family. And, like, honestly, 99% of the time with my family, the way I grew up, it, it is... I just think of mainly positive that happened in my life. Now, granted, you know, uh, I, it wasn't perfect. You know, I did have, I, I talked about it in my typing video, like coming out to my family was, was hard on them, hard on me, was not a good time, not fun. Um, them kind of having to accept it and coming to terms was also very difficult. Um, but overall, you know, I would say the biggest thing is that my family never stopped loving me. And I think that was probably the best thing about it. Um, regardless of what happened, what the outcome was, um, and, and how we, you know, reached the finish line, you know, the love was always there. So that's probably the number one thing that I'm grateful for. It's just, you know, you just hear stories, um, not just with the, you know, LGBT community, but, you know, 
a lot of people's upbringings it isn't always positive. So I'm grateful for that. Just that's great. Um, and then probably the other thing, which is kind of funny, is uh, um, just meeting my husband and and because um, we met when we were both 25. I'm 39 now, so we've been together for 14 years. And I just remember the the dating scene and you know the courtship of life and meeting your partner or whatever. Mm -hmm. It was just really hard and like not fun a lot, you know, and not knowing if things are going to progress and all that. And so I feel like meeting him was really great because it just felt like that, that, that part of my life is now complete and I, I'm set for the rest of my life. Like I don't have to, you know, date around, meet other people. I'm like, I'm done with that. This is great. And, um, and th that kind of allows me to go do other things in my life and, and pursue other things, which is great. <laughs> Because <laughs> I don't have to, you know, um, use up my time with 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 all that. Um, not like everybody needs it, though. I mean, there's people who can be single, and that's great, you know. Um, but it just for some reason it felt like that was a need that I needed to be with someone. So um, that yeah. was great for me. Yeah, that was really great because I'm like, cool. Because uh, I know a lot. There are some people for some reason that I hear that when they when they get with someone that they feel kind of bogged down. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the EP syndrome of like. You know, now I don't have variety and I didn't see it that way. I saw it's like, now I get more variety. I get more like now I don't have to worry about that, that yeah. category. Yeah. You know? I mean, I, I was a little curious. Oh, what's mm -hmm. your husband's type? If you don't, or like, yeah, what's a yeah, little it, it, down? And I'm curious it, about social type too. Yeah. So we, uh, uh, we don't have a social just yet. We're still playing around with it. Um, <clears throat> Where we're leaning towards at the very least, pop probably friends over flex as well, um, but we're not sure yet. And then, uh, but his official, but his official uh, uh, OPS type because he's in the community, uh, he's pretty active in the in, in our in the class Discord. Uh, he's uh, M F T E N E, play blast sleep consume. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he's a. Uh, uh, He's in your quadra. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, um, so that's just been great, you know, just uh, being with him, getting to know him. Like he, he introduces me to new things as well. So oh, I'm excited. I'm happy. What? Wait. Wait, is he consume us? Do you say blast? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Or consume us. Consume us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Cool. So co coin wise, um, the only ones we have similar is we're both feminine DE, we're both OE. Uh, and I think when we're both play over sleep, mm -hmm. I think those are the only three coins we have that's similar. Well, it's funny. You're, you're, uh, you're, you're opposite temperaments. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of ways to finagle out relationships like that. Make it work. Uh, oh yeah. It's really interesting. Yeah. 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 Cause people, people are like, I need to meet my perfect opposites and all this stuff. And one of my, one of my most viewed videos was like the dark side of OPS dating. Um, I was just like, if you're looking for a mommy or a daddy to take care of you, mm. you're not ready, you know? Oh yeah. Like to fill, fill your voids. Like, yeah. Um, but, but we all, but that, that's, that's, there's nuance to it. We all like, you're saying, Oh, I feel like I've taken care of something. Like I, I literally think part of the evolutionary purpose of our animal void is to force like cooperation mm. like like that's why we're such social creatures is because of the need forces it yeah um, that that is just one one like theory um but that that's that's interesting let's see okay so you'd cover his consume needs and he'd cover your well okay yeah whatever like there's a there's a buddy there's a buddy and the stuff you yeah. have in common yeah, stuff, yeah. Stuff you have yeah, because yeah, because you know, like even technically, Dave and Shan have you know they they're both energy doms, you know, so they yeah. they have that they have that buddy thing. So yeah. like no, um, and it, I'm sure you've seen in the community a lot of you know there are a lot of types that are similar that get together too, especially with among the ESFPs. There's a lot of ESFPs that are together, mm -hmm. um, but um, but yeah, I, I don't. I, I just see it, as long as you both are willing to make the relationship work, you know, that's, that's what matters. Mm -hmm. Not your type. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I used to be, I used to, well, I used to be in Myers Briggs back when I was like a freshman, sophomore in college. I was like, this girl's an INTJ and they're rare. So I have <laughs> to force this relationship. 
Right. It was bad. It was so bad. And I find that like once I, um, once I go, okay, I'm going to be happy. What I had to go is I'm going to be happy no matter what the outcome is, is when I felt like yeah. free and happy and able to actually connect with someone because I stopped having so much ulterior motives. Mm -hmm. Like I still, my ulterior motive is always my dream. Right. right. Um, but like I stopped going, I have to force this, some, this person into this block. I have to, I don't have to, I can actually care about them. Right. Rather than yeah. caring about this thing I have to solve this hidden agenda I have. Um, I, I've been up front. This is the most important thing to me. I, I want to achieve this dream and stuff. And they're like, I respect you for that. You know, yeah. going, going on right now is like, yeah. oh, wow. Like, uh, it's just nice. It's nice. Yeah. yeah it's I, definitely I, great I feel cool. more free if I'm in a, in a good relationship. I'll feel less, yeah. like there is the, the, its own freedom within that. Like, exactly. Yeah. There's, there's so much there's, and, and for me being friends last, um, I'm like, there is still like the thing in the back of my mind, okay, if this doesn't work out, back to finding someone else to connect with. That sounds yeah. like a hassle. Oh right. my fucking god. <laughs> oh my fucking god. I go have to go I have to go sift through the pan again. Yeah. I even like okay, can understand me. Uh cares yeah. enough to try and understand me is at my level where I can talk to them and they understand what what the hell I'm talking about. I'm like like, yeah well you know i'm doing better so i'm sure i'll attract more people yeah know? it's kind of funny because that, that it almost feels like that makes you feel more stuck having to think about it you know having to think about that possibility makes you feel more stuck than you really are <laughs> i have felt stuck for a while but like even yeah. even though i'm like um there's someone I'm interested in. I mm -hmm. while I was doing it, I was like, okay, I got to go out dancing, and I got to go mm -hmm. get girls' numbers, mm -hmm. um, because I need to not be in need simply for that purpose. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. this, this me working on this here will transfer to any relationship. Yeah, me being able to connect with random people and charm <clears throat> random people will help me anywhere. Yeah, um, but even then, I find myself messing it up because I like I went out and I kind of got a little group table where I could schmooze and then i went out again and i didn't do as well because i was like oh i'm only going and talking to the girls because i have an ulterior motive rather than <laughs> why don't i try and connect with people as friends <laughs> again I, I fucked it up it's like it's because you got an ulterior motive you gotta you gotta actually the motive should be to make friends right that's the only way i'm gonna do it <laughs> that's the only way i'm gonna do it even though it's, it's about my dreams that's so crazy, that's so crazy. <laughs> okay i think we're ready for the next question. Cool, cool. What is the greatest accomplishment of your life, Guy? Um, man, I feel like I actually answered it already by, by just saying that I met my husband. <laughs> yeah. like, just mentioning the amount of freedom that it just gave me and the happiness that it gives me is like so satisfying. <laughs> like I just can't. I would love to continue talking about it nonstop, but um, go ahead. No, I feel like I to waste too many people's time, but yeah, it's just it's it's great. Just just the happiness. Um, I'm just happy for the happiness that, that I've been able to achieve in life it has been really great. Um, just because I, I have been, in, you know, just growing up, you know, again, going up for being gay and everything, uh, and then feeling stuck and. You know, having those negative bouts and those negative times in, in life have been like, has made my happiness now more worth it. You know, and like, it's almost a point where I'm I'm thankful for those negativities that happened because it led me to where I'm at in life now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, I know what that. I know what that's like. I wrote a mm -hmm. little poem. It was like uh, Avery. Avery made <laughs> a little stream in Grace or, or a little thread in Grace Server called the Gratitude Thread. Right. And I, put, I put in, I put in, I'm grateful for my family who have supported me this far. I'm grateful to my friends who have kept me accountable. Yeah. And I said, and I'm grateful for all my hardships. Um, may something beautiful, good, true, and beautiful sprout from this hard heart. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I was like, I, you, I, so when I'm like, so now when bad things are, when, when I'm feeling in a negative emotional state, I'm like, this is good. 
Yeah. This is good for me, especially if I'm processing negative possibilities. I'm like, I was literally listening to Jason talk to my type twin Billy, and he's like, Why are you in the future processing negative possibilities? He's like, Well, it's good. And he's like, Well, don't you? And I kind of checked out. I was like, <laughs> and I'm like, you, you cannot see the demon of like, I can see how you go, Oh, if you're doing that all the time and you don't get out of it, that's bad. And I'm like, Yeah, it is bad. But like, yeah, yeah I'm like, Okay. I'm preparing for the eventuality. This won't work out. So I am prepared. So when it comes, if it right. comes, I'm fine. I already, I already lived that future where it didn't work yeah. out. I already lived that future. And I give myself a few days. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, and at least I, I got sleep consumed. So I actually can like fully process it. Um, yeah, I was going to say that you're lucky there because I feel like I can't. It takes me forever <laughs> to, yeah. to fully process something, and I hate being stuck in my sleep. Yeah. <laughs> that's and, horrible. <laughs> um, well, it's it's it's. Uh, imagine imagine being depressed for five years. Imagine right. Yeah. Being depressed for five years, like that's uh, it was all probably sleep processing and living in the future mm -hmm. and going nowhere, and then realizing you're going nowhere. Yeah. Going nowhere, and you have to work this out and. Um, even if you can't talk about it, you know, at the moment, like work through, work through it. Yeah. And I, and I, now I feel like I have that gift, but still what I'm doing in my life is like, okay, I've been in depressed mope energy for five years. Mm -hmm. Go out and do something now. Yeah. And <laughs> I've had people going like, you seem way extroverted to me for a mope. I'm like, <laughs> you're like, not by choice anymore. <laughs> well, I'm choosing. I'm choosing not to because I see that I see the value of I have to go get into yeah. trouble, right? Get into trouble and stir up the emotions in me, and it will get me somewhere, no matter what I'm doing. You know. Oh, but it's hard. You can't help other people with their sleep sleep that much. Right. Yeah. You can. Is, is there a way you can help other people with their sleep? Is there a way you can help a sleep last? I mean, I've not. I've not thought about it thoroughly, but. Um, for me personally, it just feels like I just have to, uh, for me, especially it's, it's the demon and I of like that negative outcome. Whenever I feel like crap, a negative outcome is starting to appear as a possibility. Mm -hmm. That's when I get stuck and I feel like crap and like having to, it still takes forever or at least it feels like it takes forever. Uh, Cause I will talk myself as much as I can off of the ledge, like, okay, this possibility is probably not going to happen. You know, it's probably not going to happen 90% sure, but that 10% is still keeping you stuck mm -hmm. and having to tell yourself over and over again, you know, um, helps a smidge, not a lot because you even want to tell yourself that stop lying to yourself. Cause you know, this bad outcome is going to happen. Um, but for me personally, I, I feel like I've I, I've been able to find ways to at least get the emotion out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you said, finding that outlet mm -hmm. to get yourself unstuck has been helpful. Wh whether it, it's you know going to a friend and just yelling it out, mm -hmm. or even just creating your own little video of just expressing yourself out mm -hmm. to get it out has been much more helpful. And um, sometimes even expressing the absurdity of it, I've just like when you vocally say it, you're just like, yeah, you know what? That I doubt that's going to happen. <laughs> you know when what? You, say it, you feel like it's stupid. Um, yeah. You're just like, Oh, you know what? That is kind of dumb. You're, that's not going to happen. Like what? <laughs> no, I've, I found, I found, okay. There is the sleep mope energy, but it's like after a day or two, I'm like, okay, I kind of need to talk it out and hear how stupid I am. Um, <laughs> it's been, it's, I, I have to tell people, I have to tell other mopes. I'm like, it's been so helpful to actually, Blah, tell people what I'm thinking so that they can iron it out and go, yeah. does this connect? Are you right. crazy? And I'm like, and I've said stuff and literally someone was like, how are you going to achieve that? And I'm like, yeah, I'm not. I'm not yeah. <laughs> um, um, but I, I don't know if this is actually the true meaning of NF and your NF last, but it's right. faster than NF. Um, but I'm like, I've been kind of telling people like NF is like how I'm framing the me, why I'm doing something or like how right. I frame the situation. And so it's like, I go, if something bad happens to me, if I get hurt, if 
if I go down this route, it's good for me because it's more emotions for me to use to achieve my goals. It's more stuff for my story to tell. It's more. So I just go, it'll be good. But sometimes it's like what I'm actually afraid of or what I've even been afraid of recently is like, I will get jaded mm -hmm. and I will trust no one. Mm. And it's like, I'm like, I, I will be punished for doing the right thing of mm. being honest. I will yeah. be vulnerable. Yeah. And you're not going to care about me because I didn't play the game right. Right. And I'm like, if that's my view of relationships, relationships are going to be hard. Yeah. So that that is where I – that's like – that was a negative emotion state I was going through recently. Um it's like, and I think okay, am I going to be punished for doing the right thing? And like, <laughs> this isn't fair. Fuck the world. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm like, nope, nope, nope. You're gonna, you're gonna find a way. You're gonna find a way. Yeah, uh, and I think also like a part of it too is um, it also kind of helps to accept it to some degree yeah. of like, okay, this is the game. So yeah, that's the game. So if that does happen, what next? You know, what what is the next step then? You know, is it really the end of the world? Maybe that's how I see it myself. For me, for me, it always feels like the end of the world when I get when I get stuck. But um, really thinking of like, well, what's the next step? Okay, if I if I do feel like all relationships suck, then then what next? You know, what what will be my what what will be my story? You know, is that how I want to be remembered? So. <sighs> Oh, that's okay. really what you what i've been trying to do at least is just like okay if this x thing happens uh one of the things that happens the most in my mind is i always feel like i'm gonna get fired <laughs> and so that's usually the thing i'm always processing so mm -hmm. i'm always just like okay whenever something bad happens at work and i feel like i'm gonna get fired i need to then just go back and be like okay if i was to get fired what is the next step ha have you, know? you ever been fired from a job no. you really liked? No, I never have. But I still, have. Like, for some reason, I have that fear, you know, <laughs> that it's going to happen. <clears throat> I have, and I and I and now I'm like, oh, it was good for me, I'm right? Like, it, it was good for me. Um, now now I'm like, and well, it's funny, it, it moved me back into my specialization, which I went to college for. It's like, <laughs> so, but it was very traumatic. It was it was very oh, right, traumatic. yeah. Yeah, like I didn't get fired um, from my previous job <clears throat> when I went to GameStop, but it felt like it was getting close to because I had that uh, that manager that didn't like me. So um, scary, yeah, yeah. And so like that was tough. I mean, I got lucky and I found GameStop before I before I left the other company, but it felt like it was heading in that direction. Um, but yeah, you know, just just making that like the planning of like, okay, well, what, what is the next step? Are you really stuck? Is that really the end of the world? You know yeah. what? Well, you know, for a fact it isn't. There's people that have gone through worse. <laughs> yeah. Come out on top. yeah. It's hard to listen to yeah. some people when I'm, they're like complaining yeah. about something like people. Find yeah. Work. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't seriously and I can't tell you. Yeah. But, it's, but it's also a mix. It's finding that balance of like, man, I'm uh, like, okay. Yeah, man, you stubbed your toe and man, for me, that's not a big deal. But you know what? I know the feeling that you're going through because I felt a similar feeling in another, you know, regard. Hey, man, that really sucks. I'm sorry you're feeling that way. And let me oh, see if I can help you in some way. That is like yeah. in the feeling rather than yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. Deep, deep. Okay. <laughs> okay. Next, next, next question. Well, what one thing I wanted to say before we move on to the next question? Yeah was um you said that uh, you what your greatest achievement and you said you want to talk about your relationship and you could just talk about it forever was i find it so cool that i interviewed another sleep blast ep who was a number <laughs> one kiernan mm -hmm. and he was like what did he say was the greatest accomplishment getting him, his wife to convincing his wife to marry him <laughs> it's like and it's like and, and people are like ones are cutthroat ones don't care about anyone but themselves ones that it's like that's <laughs> possible that's possible but also dave said in his what in his habib interview he was like we uh, he said something about freud said we have all the same energy so it's like when you're a one the vulnerability energy is like all focused in one area and for me my blow-ups have been um when i had no friends i just dump 
I, I dump on the few friends I had, or I dump yeah. on random people, which was like <laughs> traumatic and not an, an actual connection. I was like, here's my trauma. And <laughs> actually, that's why I got fired from my previous. Like, <laughs> yeah. It was like, ruined my life, right? <laughs> learned, a lesson, learned a lesson. And, but even the ones can like turn around and go, my greatest accomplishment is the love of my life. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's, again, it's, um, the uh, stereotypes there, there is like, cause I don't know if you watched the latest one, uh, the one video with Shan, you know, even, the, even, you know, she, yeah. you yeah. know, even she had, you know, um, a mental idea of, of the negativity of the one. And I think, you know, even though we're an OPS and there's many of us in here that want to grow and want to become better human beings, um, we're we're never going to be perfect we are going to have those bouts where we will um value one type over another um it's even and i think that can kind of sometimes be dangerous especially in our community just because we think we think we're getting better as humans we think we're becoming better but then things like this happen where we overvalue something and we just kind of go right back to what everybody else every other human on earth is doing um you know what? You know what I, I so I want to I want to talk about, how do I want to put this? Um I want to talk about like <laughs> the, the four the four stuff and the people the responsibility for specialized where you people you hear people go oh I'm responsibility and that and that person is fucking up because they're specialized and they're just a, like and I'm like you motherfucker you don't right. I, I'm like I or, let me let me say I'm uh maybe it's the NT play where I'm like these are all just tools. If yeah. you're throwing a tool on the ground, you're fucking up. Yeah. If you're going the bad things out there, you're fucking up. Yeah. If you're going, um, my my let me rationalize why my temperament is the best, why whatever I got in my deck of cards is the best. I'm like, you don't have access to the full suite. And you know, like you're not utilizing yeah. everything. But is yeah. that how I feel about it? Because I'm like, oh, I will utilize all the tools. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh my god, the evil is in you, motherfucker. Like yeah, I'm starting to get all of us. what Dave and Chan were saying about the bad political guys who are like blame, blame, mm -hmm. blame, blame, blame. Not that I necessarily agree with them all 100 percent politically, but I'm like, oh, I'm seeing what you're meaning. The and I'm seeing it in my own life where people are talking about political stuff. I'm like, eh, you're seeing the bad in the other side, but you're not seeing the bad in yourself. So you're not safe. Right. You're not safe. Yeah. Um you're, you're, you're kind of stupid. Uh, <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like falling in love. I've, I've been using this analogy, falling in love. Like you get, yes, you, you can pair up with someone like you. You probably don't want to pair with someone who is exactly. Mm -hmm. you. Um, but th there is even a value to that of the buddy scenario. Right. Like, um, yeah. And that means you have to, you'd have to work on your own voids without someone to help you on your own voids. But it's all, it's all, I use the analogy, this is probably such a one analogy, falling in love with your enemy. Yeah. <laughs> falling in love with your enemy, falling in love with your demons. And you're like, the four is like, enemies, what enemies? I'm like, right. <laughs> but like, um, falling in love with your enemies. <laughs> I was thinking about that, actually. I was just like, do I have enemies? Like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, do I have enemies? I'm sure I have enemies. Uh, who? Yeah, I'm I like, in know. theory, I'm sure. <laughs> Ambiguous enemies. Yeah, I know. Masculine de, and so that's also. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Um, but yeah, that's funny. But it's like, it's like doing your demons is falling in yeah. love with me. Doing yeah. your demons. Is, like I've, there are people who are like, I feel like I'm a split personality when I tap into my demons. I'm like, yeah, I want to help you mm -hmm. merge those. Yeah, I want as much as humanly possible. Them. I mean, you can never, you'll never be perfect at them, but you can just get better. <clears throat> just like Dave has always says, get good enough so that it doesn't mess up your life. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. 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 But wow. yeah, no, I feel like I feel like the ones are needed. You know, I think all of them are needed. You know, it's. Um, and yeah, there are definitely unhealthy versions of all four. Yes. Um, but you know, <clears throat> that's part of life, unfortunately. And some people will just never see it. And there has to be a, a, a form of acceptance of that and just seeing how you can, uh, get out of that situation, get yourself be even better so that you help them in some way. 
<clears throat> yeah. That's the best you can do. Yeah. But yeah, no, yeah, I remember seeing that. Like, I'm just like, no, I, I don't ever. I never thought that ones were never not nice. Like, that's a weird. <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah. Ah, uh, <laughs> I just hate it when someone's just rationalizing, just <clears throat> like, well, all those people of that type, they're they they are stupid because of this temperament. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In, in, insert about whatever about opposite. Them piece that I want to talk about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that I'm not responsible for. <laughs> See yeah. that I'm yeah. not responsible for. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I do it too. I have my yeah. own stuff too. You know, I'm, I, I know by, by no means perfect either. And I have my bouts and I have my, you know, but. Um, oh, I'll link it out too. I will link it out yeah. too. I'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, I do it too. Like, like damn it, why? Yeah. <laughs> there will be the other quadrants in relationships. They're weird. Like, <laughs> right. Oh, right. Yeah. I can never be with my opposite quadra. <laughs> oh. I probably could. Like, Maybe. really? Like, okay. But it, it is. It is nice to be with someone who you like the ease of communication. Right. And it's funny. You know what's funny is I've noticed mm. I'm talking to someone of the same quadra of me and they're like, oh, you probably don't connect with them because you're um, someone because you're not the same observer axis. And I'm like, what? I always feel like I connect with like FITs. <laughs> and then I'm like, well, that's not true. <clears throat> and then yeah, I'm like, always, yeah. what, one thing was um, I was processing feminine feelings and I went and talked to my oldest friend who I think is Savior Feminine FE. And I was like, I'm realizing my emo. I can't even remember it because it's feminine feelings. <laughs> but I'm like, <laughs> I'm letting go and I'm getting moved and I have this unlock that I can allow myself to let go. And she's like, Yeah, but everyone could. A lot of people could let go of feelings. What do you say? I'm like, Oh, most of the feminine feelings. I'm probably gonna be feminine fe. Like, yeah, like, yeah, that's obvious. <laughs> I thought I had an unlock. I thought I was special. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I felt the value. Oh my god. So um. Okay. 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 But yeah. But yeah. That's that's a cool topic. And it's like the love energy is there. The Freudian, the same amount of energy is there. It's focused. It's just weird and um, yeah. And it's yeah. We got like I feel like I'm getting unlocks by doing friends more. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's something I'm I'm having to learn too on the opposite of like. <clears throat> Somebody mentioned it a while back that they wish I would flex more because that could also be helpful for the community. It's and good. yeah, and I'm like, they're right. Yes. Like, All right. So I got to figure, you know, I'm still working on it. I'll figure out some way to be put myself out there a bit more. But, um, but yeah, but, but yeah, yeah, you got to do it. You got you got to do it to to help, you know, to help yourself and help them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that that like. I, I kind of thought about that. It's like if I have a son or a daughter who is a four, how, like, I in Dave's processing this too. Like, how do I accept them where they are? And make like, because I want, I want to, but like, um, do I do I tell them like, hey, do I raise them to go like, hey, uh, I want I want you to be a leader of the community. Mm -hmm. Like, like you don't need to have the biggest high strung goals ever, but like. The way you will be happy and stable in your life is by, by, on the ground level, mm -hmm. being the one who holds it all together. Yeah, um, I, mean, I think that, that's, pain. that's how you'll get your own, you'll, yeah. you'll be happy wherever you go. You won't have to yeah. rely on someone else, and and you will create the positive community. But that's, that's yeah. not for me to go, <clears> go into the ground and go like I I got to do some high food and stuff. Yeah, I, I think it just does go back down to the balance of like, and also letting them know. I think it's also the realization of like, <clears throat> you know, you'll be more helpful to everyone. Like, let's let's say they are friends, paint it in a picture for them to let them know you'll the community will accept you more if you are at X goal. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe to a degree that might maybe why I do also. I mean, don't get me wrong. I I love the the the, the compliments of my typing record. Um, and to some degree, that also keeps me motivated to keep doing it and being here and being with the community because it's like, wow, you're you're a value to the community. We need that. That's how. And I'm like, oh, cool. Then I need to keep doing this. So, <laughs> but yeah, just paint it in the picture for them. That's really cool. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay.
<laughs> we we had I great talk, great, great talk, yeah. great, great mm -hmm. conversation. But I think we're ready for the next question. What do you most value in friendship? And what does friendship mean to you? What do you most value in friendship? <clears throat> uh honestly, I would say one of my core values have, has always been, you know, like authenticity. Um, and it might allude more to me being an EP of just like, be open and tell me everything. <laughs> um, but just having that trust with friends has always been a big thing in terms of the ones that are really close to me. Because when I really think about it, I, I have like my, my bestie, my best friend who I hang out with almost every week, uh, pretty much every week, see him all the time. And we're very close. I've known him for almost 20 years. And, uh, I know he could tell me anything. I'll, I can tell him everything. Um, which is really great. Um, but also at the same time, like I'm, I'm not somebody, you know, I had this conversation with uh, a group chat, um, about OPS and me being friends and how I view friends. It's like, I'm also very like shallowish on the friendship with a lot of people. Like if I have a good conversation with you, we're friends. Like, <laughs> um, you know, like I consider, everyone i've i've talked to an ops a friend if i talk if i mess if they message me at any point I'm like oh hey what's up man how you been what up you know um like since, <laughs> I, since, since the day i interviewed you henry i thought we were friends <laughs> i consider us friends i'm just like oh yeah henry's cool yeah oh like God, uh so like i remember i interviewed him you know when he got typed he's great um you know everybody in the community i i it's really easy for me to call anybody a friend it's just so easy it i don't it's weirder for me to call somebody an acquaintance. I, I've never, ever used that term uh, personally. Like, like, that's just weird. I, either I know, like, if I know you and we're cool, we're friends. If I don't know you, we're just not friends yet. Like, <laughs> which is this is really funny. I am and, so opposite of you. That is yeah, so I know. I know. And that's something I've actually had to learn. Um, that other people just don't view it that way. Um, I've had my feelings hurt a couple of times when, <laughs> when people are like, we're not friends. I'm like, what? What do you me. mean? <laughs> what are you asking me for? Don't literally, I've had it where yeah. people are like connecting with me and we're actually even connecting. And then they ask for too much. I'm like, you're going to yeah. me, buddy. <laughs> you're even too well, I mean, that's okay. That's okay. But it's a certain thing, but like, um, I remember uh, a couple of years back, one of my, my system manager, I, I casually mentioned, yeah, we're friends, blah, blah. And he literally was just like, we're not friends. <laughs> he was just like, you're my boss. Like, we don't hang out outside of work. We don't bubble. Blah, blah. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, that kind of hurt, but all right. <laughs> but I'm like, we're cool. We talk about gaming. We like... Like I know more. I'm, I know about your cats. What and what do you like? <laughs> uh, How are we not friends? Um, but yeah, it's it's, it's a, something I've had to learn though. Of like, not everybody gold. views things the same way <laughs> in oh terms of friendships. God, this yeah. is gold. This is gold. Yeah, this is fucking gold. Because um, <laughs> like I've mentioned, I have a four friend at work, and he I was I was like, he was like, he has friends everywhere. He's like, I value having you as a friend. I'm like, Gene. <laughs> Gene, I value you as a friend too. <laughs> that's coming from me, so that means a lot. I literally mm. said that out loud. It's was, was kind of saying it as a joke, but I'm like, yeah. But it's like, like, yeah, the half I joke. Think, I think the empathy that you need to have for the people who are friends lower is like where you fit in. Uh, you yeah, know, it's just like where you fit in in their life. Um, yeah, and 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 one who is very positive will see that. Uh, friends are a big unlock, and if they maybe they don't need to know this code, but if they figure out, oh, I'm really bad at friends, um, they might value you because of all, all the friend, the abundance of friends you have. <laughs> they can go, oh, but they maybe they just don't see it yet. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and like I said, the other part is also don't be overbearing. Like I feel like I can be, like like you said, reliant too much on friends because of that. Because I view, you know, I know Shan had talked about like sometimes. <clears throat> the saver friends would expect something back and um for free you know for free um i like to think i don't do that but i guess to a certain degree i have to also accept that there are points in my life when i have of just like hey we're friends so you know i do you a favor you do me a favor right and i don't always i definitely don't always 
see them i see almost everything as an equal a favor for a favor even if it's like hey i lent you five bucks so can you cut off your leg for me uh it can can sometimes happen and um but just having to be not that far but i'm just saying i'm just over exaggerating but yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know but just being more accepting of like okay well that's just not going to be the case and you know just be aware of like that not everybody's going to be it's going to see your your friendship as, as equal you know um and then also limit the favors too like i mean just don't you me i would also have it's a lot harder for me to tell people no so <laughs> i have to be careful with it and you know force myself to be like all right hey man like we are friends but i just can't do that <laughs> like <laughs> i can't do this favor for you <clears throat> but yeah definitely growing there well that's what's so funny what's so funny about that is um on a positive side for the ones mm -hmm. is like i've noticed it where i'm like i'll just i'll just be like oh you're in a tough situation and i'm i'm in a i'm bet i'm in a better situation than you Oh, your your brothers will not chip in for your father's urn. Here's two hundred bucks, <laughs> and then yeah. I and then I get fired from the company. He was a man. He was like a mid level manager. And he got moved around, and he he never reached out to me, and I never reached out to him. And I'm like, I don't expect anything. I don't expect yeah. anything. Which, in a sense, is admirable. Yeah. Probably also like, yeah, I have moved on, and you're in a different place, and whatever, and I don't expect anything back. Um, yeah. And um. I'm like that is in a sense admirable, but like yeah. also I'm being kind of weird. <laughs> oh, right? Yeah. <laughs> you meant I I've moved on. I, I don't even want right. to talk to you because you're from this not nice part of my life. I don't even care. And I don't I don't even feel bad that you didn't reach out to me. Um yeah. cause, cause what do I have to get out of it? Um <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, cool. definitely. And I do feel that way sometimes, like um with some some people that i've talked to before in the past friends or whatever and then to just to hear the we're not friends or whatever it's can can feel hurtful <laughs> but it's also just me trying to work on being okay with it like well that, that's how people are some people are not going to be they just don't view it the same way and that's that's what needs to be okay not that they're wrong i'm wrong whatever <clears throat> people are just different mm -hmm. Hmm. No, that's good. Wow. Great processing. Okay, let's yeah. let's move on. <laughs> I know, I'm being awkward as we transition that up. What I, actually okay, okay, okay. Um do you feel like we answered what does friendship mean to you? What does friendship mean to you? Oh man. Well, like I said, I, there's just times when it feels shallow of just like shallow. Okay. It, it comes across like it, I, if I look at it from other people's perspective of just like wow guy, guy considers everybody a friend that can look very shallow but i just don't feel like it is because it, it just feels like you just naturally become friendly to everybody and you just be nice to everybody you be kind and you know favor for a favor and, and that's just how it works um but then i also have friends that i'm incredibly close to um, that I know I can't not confide in other people except for them because I know they're, they're more accepting of my darker sides. Mm. Um, so for me, I mean, I just feel like there, for me, there's layers of friendship, I guess is the best way I can say it. There's just layers of friendship, but, and there are going to be ones where you value more over the other. Um, but you're still giving the part of yourself either way to everybody. So Okay, so actually this gets me thinking because so mm -hmm. Kelly, I interviewed her, she didn't get her social type back ever and or yet, and we kind of later concluded her on three. Mm -hmm. And I was like, there's so much nuance in your understanding of friends. Now she was older than all, a bunch of a few of the other people mm -hmm. I uh, interviewed. And I was like, oh, you must be save your friends. But I'm like, <laughs> it is kind of like the who do you go to to understand responsibility? You go to Jordan Peterson sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like uh, to preach, <laughs> so he's like, yeah. "Yes, this is extremely hard. Responsibility is extremely hard." It's like, go to a one who has figured out the meaning of friendship on his heroes. Journey. Yeah, that's how you'll understand the depth of friendship. Right? Is, yeah. Oh, it's so abundant. It's so, and I, I can understand the value of what you're doing. Of like, it's mm -hmm. so abundant. It's like, it's like the flex for me 
is so yeah. shallow. It's so shallow. Right. <laughs> it's so shallow. It's so I'm 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 flexing so cheaply. Yeah. Like, you'll you'll hear ones flexing about literally nothing. And you're like, how did you turn that into a flex? How yeah. did you turn that into a flex? Um, yeah. It's so sh like I I was processing something recently where I was like. I was like, flex is frivolous. I was like, yeah. but wait, friends are frivolous. And I'm yeah. like, I'm like in a sense, uh, that probably means nothing. But it's like, yeah, the, there's a biological value to both, so that there is death in both. Yeah. Like, um, but I was like, <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying. It's such a, it's such a consume ramble. Um, yeah. Last, last <laughs> but yeah, but like you said, like you know, it it just feels shallow seeming. I don't think it's. I don't think either one is incredibly shallow, but it's just like, um. There's just a perception of it. You do it so much, you, you know, you can so, come across like it's shallow. One thing that I kind of uh, noticed was um, I said, I said, flex is the domain of the artist. Because mm -hmm. I was like, art is technically frivolous. Um, mm -hmm. But there are going to be artists who are fours. There are going to be artists who are twos. There are going right. to be directors who are twos and all this stuff. And none of that is a solid thing. But right. um, what art is, is like, it's like showing off these colorful feathers. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It is it's like if you go down and you actually do that, it, it, well, yeah, it, I can see that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah a bit of that. But you could, there are domains of art where it could be this is about connecting with my friends, right? Band, um, this could be that, could be that. Um, and but I, uh, that's what I meant by frivolous. And I'm like, yeah, well, my book will be the ultimate flex of like, let me show you <laughs> my understanding of, yeah. That of the world and all of it and i put so much time to into it and i put mm -hmm. so much sleep energy into it and let me show and you better feel the darkness <laughs> and depth of what i went through and i like <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's all a massive flex it's all yeah. a massive flex um <laughs> i'm not just doing this to connect with my uh, because i'm not friends i'm not gonna go for the friends first cookie of like i'm gonna write this little short story for you to connect with you and here and blah, 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 blah. right like, no, it's all in. It's all in sleep, yeah. energy, sleep, 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 sleep. Yes, aesthetics. Um, so that's what I mean by frivolous. And, yeah. But like, yeah, uh, it's very interesting. I guess the social stuff should feel good. I don't know. I don't even know what I mean by frivolous. So right. No, it's I'm all good. Not on this, so whatever. There's no confusion. <laughs> oh, interesting, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Moving on to the next question. What, if anything, is too serious to be joked about, in your opinion, Guy? Um, yeah, I was thinking about this. You know, remember the Tina Fey one where she also mentioned that she doesn't think anything should be off the table? And I kind of feel the same way. Like, I feel like nothing should really be off the table. However, I think there's always a time and a place. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that is the tea that um, Kelly gave me was yeah. context. <laughs> yeah. Between like, what relationship are you in with this person? So can can yeah. they handle it? Is this how you cope? Yeah. So. You know, like like the the common phrase is when somebody makes a bad joke, you know, too soon. Too uh, soon. <laughs> ah, too soon. Um, you know, so but for the most part I think um laughter and joking, you know, is also to some degree it's it's also a coping me mechanism for many, so to to to, EP, to 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 restrict that would be bad. <laughs> I feel like I have someone who I can joke about being a one with, mm -hmm. and it like they just laugh at my laugh at it, and I'm like, it it actually feels really freeing. Yeah, <laughs> I can do that where I can be like, I'm gonna I'm gonna just to be the best. And they're like, <laughs> you said the best, the best. The best. I'm like, <laughs> I know. You got me. You got yeah. Me. Funny. And I literally make jokes about being masculine. Be. I make, like, I'll be in public and I can make jokes. I can be like, yeah. dancing. And there are people behind me. I go, they're going to stab me in the back. And the girl I'm dancing with is like, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but I'm serious. <laughs> but I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Just time and place. You know, uh, I think it's it, there's definitely some healthy versions. Uh, there's healthy parts to it, so that thing is needed. Mm -hmm. so, and, and, to respect and it would be bad. The comedians, the comedians connecting us. Uh, the four yeah. is the domain of the comedian. Exactly. Uh, yeah. 
is the domain of connecting and i and i see that their motivation when they i haven't given the sense around this i almost maybe i should pull up like a you know maybe dave Chappelle's not the best but like there are comedians who yeah. are like we were making a joke about this side and now we're making a joke yeah. about this side, laughing at this side and now you are caught and now we're laughing yeah. together and if yeah. they're, they're laughing together they're connected yeah it's, like, it's very that's a big deal um and if no one releases that negative energy Mm -hmm. um, this is what I've been saying, and it's a political thing. It's like then it's going into the dark. Yeah, the yeah. Dark. <laughs> Can yeah. Nervous, and we're like, "What are you hiding from?" Me? I'm being a people. But what are you hiding? So, right. I know what my side's saying about your side. You must be saying the same thing about my side, and I've seen both sides, and they are saying the same thing about both sides. So yeah, <laughs> it is funny. But I'm just like, eh, if you don't see the darknesses when you're within yourself, yeah. You're the bad guy. You're the bad guy. You're the unconscious exactly. person. Mm -hmm. the person. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is, is there is ha, has there been a time where anyone has made a joke that was personal to you that hurt you? Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, I was bullied when I was a kid. Uh, so I mean, definitely a lot of stuff was hurtful. And I think it just all, all comes down to the context of it, like. Obviously, like if it's if it was meant to be, I feel like I'm I feel like I've done a pretty good job of being able to read when something's intentional and something isn't, you know, like I can there's a lot nine times out of 10. I feel like I can I can tell when you're literally just joking um, and you're not trying to harm me in any way. Um, and I feel like because of that, I, I don't necessarily can think of an actual moment where it wasn't intentional that I actually got hurt. Uh <laughs> by it um i would say maybe when somebody calls me out on a pattern that I, I even i wasn't aware of it's probably when i'm like what like i do this so, uh, <laughs> so probably I, I, I've, uh, <laughs> I've seen some sleep last and i then and i last in the animal stack be like my patterns no leave me alone like get yeah really defensive about it even if it wasn't like and i last um, right <laughs> and and it's funny because when I talked to Avery, I talked, I was, she was like, don't make a joke about anyone's DI or anything. And I'm like, Avery, I, someone made a sh joke about my SI, my phone. Right. And I was like, I am weak. I should die. <laughs> like, I should throw myself off the mountain. I am useless. I make things worse. I thought I was better or, or maybe mediocre or like average. And now I'm like, no, you make things worse. I didn't need, it's like, I have a one. I didn't even consider that I was bad, that I was yeah. worse, that I was below people. I didn't even consider that. It's like everyone can see, hey, you're you're at the bottom. It's like, uh, and, it's uh, like yeah. and it's like, and now I'm like, and now I'm like, and when he when he, when he didn't apologize, and I wasn't expecting an apology. I was like, yeah, you really hurt. And he's like, I can't apologize to you for that because you have to be able to handle that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and I think because um, I mean, like you know, going off what you said too, I'm also I'm also di, so it's still like I still have some degree, a little bit of like I'm here, tribe is you know here. Um, <laughs> so tribe, opinions, right? Yeah, and so getting called out sometimes, I was just like, you know, you're not good at this, and then <laughs> and I'm just like, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, I guess definitely, you know, hit, hit, hitting me in my sleep, hitting me in my demon and I, uh, even though, even though I could tell it was a joke, you know, there's still always going to be a part that's still going to get, it's still going to sting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> but I just, I think, I think there's a problem with the cancel culture and the, to be mm -hmm. but like, yeah. of the, like, we like you are you said you're you're hispanic growing up in texas and gay yeah. it's, i i'm yeah. curious have you ever felt like someone has crossed the line in those regards and made a joke? not not in person um you know people you know people online can say more things easier you know things which is you know i don't really care um but now in person it doesn't really happen um because I'm, I'm in a big city i'm in houston so um it's a lot more diverse area um yeah a lot of people in, in in the in the big city seems to be way more accepting than from what i've seen as, as, compared to the overall um 
Yeah. Yeah. So I haven't never, never really experienced anything like that. Um, at least not yet. Or at least if it did happen, I don't remember because <laughs> it didn't, it didn't hit me hard enough. Hit um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. That, uh, uh, that, um, that, it, that I got stuck in some way. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, but I guess to a degree there, there's still that chance. I mean, there's still there's a, lot, there's a lot of crime happening in general, you know, there was a recent shooting in Texas, um, that got them to end up killing children. So it's like, I think at this point, you know, just expect that there's always going to be some bigotry in some, in some way, shape or form, regardless of mm -hmm. who you are. <clears throat> it, it affects everybody. <laughs> that, that is what I feel like. I'm like, I'm like, I'm, as I'm processing this, I'm like, okay, cloistered communities not it's like it's like okay i have something against these people I just, literally it's like hey maybe i'm conservative maybe i'm kind of eyeing the uh hispanics and then i fall in love with the girl <laughs> who believes in me and i'm like okay 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 now i'm connected blah blah and okay i'll like i'll like uh, that and, uh, it's like uh, and then i'm like okay this bigotry this bigotry of i'm not connected with this this uh this part of the world yet Mm -hmm. I don't want to get in that for a moment. Um, yeah, it's it's like it's like I'm like when you're complaining about some type thing that's not you, you're being bigoted. You just haven't seen the value, the use, the 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 niche where this fits in, the niche where you can use it in yourself, and you are rejecting it. And that is big type of bigotry. Like literally, mm -hmm. think about it. Think about it. If OPS becomes more mainstream in some regard, or it's integrated into the whole of human understanding. Um, we are going to start moving into type bigotry. Right. <laughs> it's going to be all um, over. And the thing is, is that some of the... some it, of the it, it, it kind of already is there. It's already there. It's already yeah. there. We're already experiencing it. And yeah. the type of bigotry... Like, the thing is, is here's another dark aspect of it. Some of the type bigotry, there's going to be some truth to it. Right. Yeah. I mean, th th there is th there is the anecdotal <clears throat> part of it, you know, like... You know, there, there's like there's a truth to the stereotypes, you know. So it, it is there, um, but it's, the problem is when it just gets magnified. But it's like it's like when it when it's in the dark, they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They flame to you, and we hate them. And it's like, yeah. Like someone said to me recently that they were seeing a pattern of people who were they were like, we think they're ones. Um, we're getting accused of like sexual impropriety at meetups. And I said, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 I see it. I see it. Yeah. I see it. And I, I, and I go, I, I see, it. I see it. I see where it is in myself. And I see what, I see why I can see their rationalization. I can, like, let me, let me tell you, I can see, I can see these ones if, if this is happening going, I'm great. They, they'd have a great time with it. And I'm like, yeah, that's darkness. Yeah. Is... Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's definitely, I mean, it's been proven I mean, by Dave and Shan's work, you know, they've shown that there are clusters mm -hmm. of certain patterns emerging from certain types and everything, but we shouldn't still use that to not give people the benefit of the doubt. And I think that's kind of what happens in the community where it's like, oh, you're X type. So chances are this is you now this is who you are this is your identity your type you can't move from this you know and this negative aspect of you is now you yeah and Anyone so that. <clears throat> yeah this should be and that does happen unfortunately it happens it happens in all communities um but uh yeah and having to move past that can be difficult for for many mm -hmm. yeah grow up people grow up sheeple uh, yeah Grow up, tribe. Grow up, grow, up, grow up your overarching tribe with these people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, this is great. This is yeah. great. Um, but maybe, maybe, I don't know. It's um, the people are like, is it this or this? Is it this or this? Is it this or this? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like, nope, it's more complicated. I got to be responsible for the contradiction. For yeah, the, yeah, it, it always is. Yeah, that's where it's hard. It's like all the caveats, though, because it's like, okay, hey, so is this true about this? Well, yeah, but this, 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 and don't go all in on this, and uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Constant, constant um, conversation. I heard someone say, like, I love dealing with contradictions. Uh, contradictions. <laughs> 
how, how do you deal with it? Like logically. So I just figure out which one is false and then I know which one is true. And I'm like, yeah. that is dumb. Not logic. That is not yeah. how logic work. Because I want to be out there. Biological creatures are seeking <laughs> seeking equilibrium, right? Mm -hmm. We have we have opposite needs. We have contradictory needs. And if you, you can see this, if you're a double decider or a double observer, mm -hmm. a need for order and a need for this and that, and, that, and you got to balance it. So humans flip and are different things mm -hmm. at different times. This is swings. These are contradictions in the organism which are needed because it needs to find equilibrium with its environment. The environment is changing. Therefore, humans are walking contradictions. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so to think that I proved one wrong, therefore other right, that is not that is not how you deal with contradictions. <laughs> yeah. The 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 left is is right is wrong about this, therefore the right wing is right. Right. Like that is a rhetorical trap to say I've given you two stories. Mm -hmm. Um, which one of these is true? So I've been saying like political uh, stuff. And so he's, he's talking about the story of the state. And so he mm -hmm. says that we are in a two, st two story state. We are given two stories and you go, well, the right is wrong. Therefore the left is right. Mm -hmm. uh, and people fall into that rhetorical trap. And so it's more stable. People get trapped yeah. with these two. And you, and you don't even consider that both of them could be wrong. And he goes, mm -hmm. The pro the thing with with the rule of one the one story state let's say totalitarian rules is they have a single story, and they are more efficient have more directions they are more monarchical they have one story, mm -hmm. and therefore you can go you are told one story is true and you go, is this story true, and you have no outlet there's no there's no there's no other trap within the story to fall into and so then it's less stable you can question the story when it shows weakness mm -hmm. it's less stable. Um, it's more stable to be in a two-story state. So, which aligns with old stuff I want to do. <laughs> uh, Coincidentally. <laughs> what, what, I wanted to pull up um, mm -hmm. some of what Brian was saying. Well, I'm scared to press the chat button because I feel like I might like um, accidentally exit. So... Um, gee, the, I, I can pull up there. Um, so he was saying, I wondering how much masculine FI plus the culture, which one grows up with affects one's friend's philosophy as an aspect of this. I think FI is most likely the fu function to be strongly loaded in one's upbringing. And I'm not sure if he means before the upbringing, but I would say FI is the most subjective function. <clears throat> it is the well, subject function and it's feeling. There's no, there's no, um, but there's no, the thing is, is I find it funny. Um, like, I don't, I'm not sure what you have to say about this. Actually, I want to hear what you say first. And then I'll yeah. say what I say. Well, I guess we can just start with how, just the immovability of, of something. Um, for one, for me personally, you know, I, I have identity, masculine, uh, immovable or difficult to move. Um, so just in general, whenever something gets into any of your immovable parts is kind of gets locked on. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that that more than anything plays the bigger role <laughs> uh, of the immovability, my, you know, and growing up in my culture with my family and everything. And um, they basically instilled in me the values that I ended up having in my life um and to a certain degree i do have obviously that's a mexican culture family <laughs> very very camaraderie ish mm -hmm. you know my family would always have like parties and get togethers and lots of people and but to a degree i also didn't want to be around them for too long because i wanted to do what i want to do because i'm still di mm -hmm. um so I do see it, I think, just in general with immovability. Uh, the immovability parts of you is what's going to get locked on into what you end up valuing. Mm -hmm. um, it just happens, I think, to align with the feelings and the values. So I can definitely see that. Um, but I also know that Dave and Shan have talked about how, um, I, think, I think they mentioned that FE tends to be the most... Um, culture aware. 
culturally aware and affected by the culture more um, from what they've said. Um, but it could just be saber feeler in general, maybe. I don't know, question mark. It's working theories, I guess. I never thought about it too long. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I would say and maybe, yeah, the immovability FI, probably. Yeah, I could see that. Well, the funny thing is, is let, let me point out, um, <laughs> let me point out, I, I hate to, I shouldn't beat up on uh, Dave and Shannon. It's not, it's not even a big beat up, but the, the, the one thing I was like, I was like processing in a video I didn't post. I was like, you don't understand the power of subjectivity, which is like <laughs> of the subject, of the subject. You're like, yeah. you're saying too much science. And I'm like, you're like, hey, can you measure everything? Like maybe there is a point at which you go, if you're being objective, you're saying everything's shit. You're nihilistic. <laughs> you don't have direction. Subjectivity brings direction and building on. It brings a solid mm-hmm. center. Whereas if you are objective, you go, Everything's stupid. Everything's dumb. Everything's wrong. Everything is blah, 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 blah. scientific method. It's like let's deconstructionist. Let's let's build something up here. Let's 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 put away all the all the bullshit. Everything's wrong. <clears throat> and say what's right. What am I going to say? What's right? Yeah. And, and and it's funny. Some people were um, beating up on Dave and Shan for they were in a more corporate culture. Not Dave and Shan, but people outside were in a more corporate culture, and Dave and Shan are running things a bit more like the rebel. The rebels and the uh, mm-hmm. and Millennium Falcon, and we're a small ragtag band, right? I'm just even pulling out a metaphor out of my ass, and so they're like, "We are about the scientific method." And I'm like, "I get what you're saying, but like, it's not about being objective or not objective. Like, objectivity matters, but also subjectivity matters. Mm-hmm. Being your own people matter. Being your own person matters. And this is such a di and a very blunt <laughs> say, I'm saying it will give you direction." Um, mm-hmm. Um, so there's a value in in the subject and who you, and who mm-hmm. you but like it's it's it's, it's kind of crazy. I'm saying you're directionless. If you're obje- if you're objective, you're directionless. Right. <laughs> but but I yeah. but I value the objectivity. But right. if you call it objectivity, <laughs> if you're working with the subjective, and you're like, how could you be against subjectivity? I'm like, watch me. <laughs> I'm saying I see the value in both. That, therefore, I'm more objective. <laughs> right? Yeah. Therefore, I win. Right? Therefore, I win. <laughs> therefore, I win. <laughs> this is what I have to bring to you. Mm-hmm. My subjective opinion. Your subjective opinion is shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Um, oh, subjectivity matters. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be my shirt. To compete with Dave and Shan <laughs> at the merch store, so, and I will make I will. Dang it! Someone already took subjective personality. I'll have to buy it off Rob. Oh well, maybe. Oh yeah, you, you can. Um, subjectivity matters. Um, but the thing is that they know the value of sleep. Like they know. Yeah. That. But I'm just saying. Yeah. Like, but there were times where like, oh, the object, the 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 uh, the play, the people, the. The play functions, they can see the spectrum, the spectrum, the spectrum, the spectrum, the spectrum. I'm like, what about the focused in? What about the narrow? Like, let's go narrow. <laughs> Shan's a one, but she's lead play. So we're talking about her functions. And is ST, which is the most accountable held function. Least objective play. My God. I don't know. It's, it's a lot of nuance. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of nuance. Yeah. <laughs> going around. Um, okay. 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 <clears throat> I think we've gotten... Through that question. Um, cool. so the last question, Guy. The mm-hmm. last question. How do you cope with the fact that you will one day die? Oh, man. So this is funny. Because. Uh, uh-huh. um, not, um, not, not funny, I hope. Well, not funny, but not funny. <laughs> um, so, no, it was just an interesting question just because, like, I've actually. Um, I guess, you know, I, I don't want to be vulnerable. Um, if it's vulnerable. I guess I'm not really being vulnerable. I'm okay talking about it. Um, I know, right? doesn't matter. Uh, but, yeah, so a funny story is for some reason when I was a little kid, some reason because I'm messy, um, like when I was like seven or eight, I actually had this weird fear of dying. Like I would actually wake up in the middle of the night, run to my parents' room and be like, mom, dad, I don't want to die. And they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I'm going to die someday. Yeah. Everybody dies someday. <laughs> and they're like, and I'm like, yeah, but you know, and I'm like, I don't want to die. I'm like, but it's okay. Like you're, you're seven years old. 
you're you have a long life to live you know like it was a point where they took me to doctors um and you just have this crazy fear and even to this day maybe it's sleep last or whatever my parts are or whatever demon and i whatever you want to say it is it's still something that i'm kind of still dealing with all the time um this like impending doom stuck it's coming you know nothing i can do it's out of my control can't do anything about it um so to a degree there's a part of me that i think it's always going to keep is going to unfortunately always keep coping with it mm -hmm. um Again, I don't know what happened my, when I was a child that made me have that fear. Um, now, it doesn't, it's not like I'm haunted by it though every day or anything. Um, but every once in a while, it just, it does like just randomly pops into my head. And that's probably definitely my parts of sleep last where an unprocessed feeling just jumps back into my mind. Um, I've, I mean, I've, I've had to accept it because <laughs> we are all going to die. That's truth and nothing I can change. Um, so the best thing I'm doing now is just living the happiest life that I can, um, living life to what I would consider to be the fullest um, so that I don't regret, you know, how I live my life, what I did in life, all that, all that stuff um, is how I'm basically coping with it. However, it's still unprocessed emotions that still pop in. And I don't know if that will ever go away. Um, but maybe a part of that has also, again, helped me become the person that I am of like, well, I'm, I'm going to, you know, push through life and, and, and create the best, you know, atmosphere around me and the people that, that I care about. Yeah. <clears throat> no, that's really good. That's really good. Um, I, I almost want to I almost want to push a little NF on you and maybe it won't even it won't even stick and you're like ah what is it and I'm like maybe later it'll probably pop back in, <laughs> pop back in but, um, but like um and I've I've kind of said like they this is what I actually this is what I think the per the meaning of OPS is is like mm. guy you're not the only guy right there are other guys around <laughs> there are other guys walking yeah. around so who you your pattern who you are in the context of living organisms it's kind of hard to squash out because you mm. you are something that pops up over and over again right you're an you're an incarnate you're not a reincarnation you're an incarnation of guy the esfp uh, right and so you can find some solace and say okay even even if on this round and all the guys and i don't <laughs> and i die a little unhappy or something and i have some regrets there are other guys out there having a good time Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. <laughs> and again, just, it's about talking. It's about talking yourself through uh, out of the ledge, you know. Yeah. And then you know. But there's still a value exactly to what you're saying. Of I need yeah. to make. I need to make mine. Like I do that, and that kind of puts the pressure on me because I'm a one. Yeah. And I'm like I'm the most important spear tip of the <laughs> universe, and going to save civilization. Yeah. Blah, blah. And I'm like. Yeah. But I'm also just a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy of a right. copy. And if this Henry doesn't work out this way, the way this Henry wants to, maybe um, I'm a copy that pushes the ball forward a little bit, mm -hmm. works on this little piece of art that inspires someone else to make the bigger piece of art that I want to do all the things later. And I was a piece of the chain. And it's not about me and my subjective, but I also don't want to live a negative, sad life, miserable life. Yeah. <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, my, my experience, my S sensory, who I am as an individual, like that matters too, but also mm -hmm. it doesn't matter because I'm a copy of a copy of a copy. I think that's the N part of the N yeah. of OPS. That's the nihilism and the meaning. Because Dave's like seeing yeah. nihilism and the uh, NF sleeps are seeing nihilism. And I'm like, no, nihilism bad. <laughs> Fuck you guys. There's more to it. <laughs> more to it. NF. There's an NF to it. There's a let yeah. go. I am saying let go, but also hold on. The let go. Well, hold on. Right. I know. Right. Just have one hand on the ledge. <laughs> one hand on the ledge. One hand. You have to be the bridge. Yeah. Be like, the bridge. Be the bridge between the objective and subjective. Be the complete self. Be the. Mm -hmm. I'm holding the subjective and objective and my two halves of myself together. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, guy. Mm -hmm. This has been my longest interview to date. Oh, I know. I, I, I knew it was, I, I bet you had those questions set up 
and I'm sleep last, I'm like, this is going to take a while. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you're prepared and I can, I, I can keep going. <laughs> yeah, I've, noticed that. I've noticed that with the extroverts and the sleep last. So I was like, yeah, I probably could just let them talk, but uh, yeah, but I, ha I have some of my own inputs. I don't want to, I don't want to ram shot it, but yeah, yeah. No, it's been good. I think I really, I really hope this interview, um, people want to learn about the fours, the fours experience. Yeah. How you fit in because I've just, I've just heard, I was just like, I've heard negative things being said about the ones and the fours and all the stuff and they're polarized yeah. people. The middle, the middle, not so much though, sometimes. Um, but um, yeah, I've heard, I'm just like, shut the fuck. I, 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 I now I want to point at this interview and go, shut the fuck up. Look at this interview. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah like we talked about earlier there's there's positive and negatives of both um of all of them you know um and nobody's perfect this is how we are you know um just do the best to be the better you doesn't matter what your type is yeah you know we can do everything yeah uh, so yeah 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 okay okay i think i think it's time to end the live stream everyone who's joined us thank you Thank you for joining us. Um, I hope I hope we've all learned valuable lessons, and I'm ending the broadcast now. Bye, Goodbye. everybody.